Welcome back to Econ 104 Macroeconomics. In this video, we're going to be focusing in on economic growth. Primarily, we're going to be taking a look at what is economic growth. We're going to measure economic growth and determine kind of how fast things are growing and the differences between them, if that's the case. We'll also take a very brief history, a brief look rather, at the history of economic growth. With that, we'll see that economic growth really is, well, relatively speaking in terms of human history, it's a relatively recent phenomenon. Uh, without further ado then, let's carry on with this video and let's take a look at economic growth and what exactly we mean by that. Okay, so starting off with that, what are we talking about when we're talking about economic growth? Well, when we're talking about economic growth, we are talking about growth in GDP. That is growth in our output, the amount of stuff that we're able to produce. And not just growth in GDP, but growth in real GDP. That is the amount of real stuff we're able to produce, the amount of output, the amount of things that we're able to buy and produce and purchase. So the actual measurement of stuff that we're able to do. More importantly, though, than the growth in real GDP is that often and Unfortunately, often economic growth is used synonymously for both of these, but often of more interest to us is growth in real GDP per capita. That is kind of our average consumption, right? The average amount of stuff that everybody in the nation is able to produce, or on the other side of that, the average income of everybody in the nation, everybody in the economy that we're evaluating, or the average amount of expenditure, right? All of that is kind of synonymous. Average output, average income, average expenditure. That is, hey, our total income, total output, total expenditure within a nation per person. So that's what we're looking at with real GDP per person. And with that, we'll take a look at, really, this is a, uh, we took a look in the previous videos. It's not the best metric of standard of living. It's not the best metric of quality of life. It misses out on a lot of important factors. But for the time being, it is the rather universal metric utilized to, eval to evaluate, well, how well off is a nation? Uh, how well off is an economy? Are they growing? Are they not growing? Are they doing better year after year? So... That's our idea. It's not perfect. We took a look at that in the past, but it is our primary measure of development. So that being said, let's take a look at the history of economic growth. And the history of economic growth really is known as the hockey stick of growth. The hockey stick of growth. And why? Why is it called a hockey stick of growth? Well, it's because we can take a look at it like this. We could take a look at our real GDP per capita. So vertical axis is that output per person, kind of idea within a nation. And then along the bottom, we could take a look at time. Reason why it's called the hockey stick of growth is because historically it's looked something like this been relatively flat, constant, and then all of a sudden it started to do one of these. That is, if you imagine that, that's almost like it's a hockey stick, right? There's the stick and then the bend and then into the blade, right? If you wanted to, we could kind of make it a little bit more exciting. Kind of go like this. Maybe put some tape on there. Right, now, now you have a real hockey stick of growth. But, right, that being said, let's ignore that yellow part. It's not actually part of this. That's just kind of visual fun. So, we've looked at this historically. That is, right about the 1800s, all of a sudden, despite all of human history being relatively stagnant in economic development, that is, GDP per person, the amount of income, the amount of output, the amount of stuff that you're able to produce per person, stayed relatively constant throughout human history. That is, at least on the scale we're looking at, there really wasn't any change. If we changed our scale, there would be a slight increase through periods of time leading up to the 1800s. But generally speaking, 
the amount of stuff that your parents had was one of the same as the amount of stuff that you'd be able to have. It was one of the same. There wasn't any progression. There wasn't any growth. 1800s came and all of a sudden following that, we had this explosion. We had this rapid change. And since then, we've had this drastic increase year over year, generation after generation of output per person. So what caused that? What was our kind of special event that happened in the 1800s? Well, in about the early mid 1800s was our industrial revolution. The industrial revolution. And interestingly, right about this time as well, this is where we started to witness the divergence of global economies, right? So we saw um, a lot of European countries starting to rapidly develop, rapidly see this great increase in GDP per capita. Meanwhile, at the same time, we witnessed other countries that did not share in it, that continued the shaft, so to say, of this hockey stick of growth for much longer before they started to witness this drastic increase. So we started to have a separation of world economies as well, in this case as well. So growing kind of global inequality happened. So the Industrial Revolution, historically speaking, that was our big kind of breaking point in history. And from that point forward, at least through till today, we've witnessed this rapid growth in output per person. That is, we've witnessed this rapid change in our standard of living. So that is since the 1800s, generation after generation, each future generation has enjoyed a higher standard of living, a higher quality of life, access to more things, able to produce more things year after year after year. And that's what we mean when we talk about economic growth, is that this growth of real GDP per capita and hopefully we realize in this that it's a relatively a relatively recent phenomenon. So <clears throat> that's a bit of the history of it. Let's take a look at measuring it over time, measuring changes and figuring out well, really how fast things are growing. So let's jump over and take a look at that. So let's take a look at Canada here. Let's take a look at Canada and let's take a look at two different years. We'll take a look at 2016 and 2017. And the reason we'll take a look at these two years is just because that's ah, not necessarily exciting, right? There's no great recession or pandemic like we witnessed in 2019. It's just kind of run of the mill kind of case. And then we'll take a look. So there's our year. We'll take a look at our real GDP in each year and what we had in each one. And of course, this real GDP. This is being measured in trillions of Canadian dollars. And if you're interested, this is real GDP in 2012 dollars. Okay, so all that aside, we had in 2016 real GDP of 1.94. And in 2017, we had real GDP of 2. Keep in mind that's 1.94 trillion and 2 trillion dollars. What we're going to be taking a look at, uh, we're going to be interested in, is calculating that growth rate. That is, hey, how fast did our real GDP grow from one year to the next? And the way we can determine that is we can calculate G for our growth rate. And our growth rate is going to be the percent change from one year to the next. So again, the way to calculate that, if we just have a consecutive year period, one year to the next year, is we can just go, hey, what was our value final minus our value initial divided by our value initial. So if we work that three, what do we have? We have two minus 1.94 all over 1.94. So if we work that out, what do we get? We get a growth rate of 0 0.031. So keep in mind this here, we always have the option to display a growth rate as either a decimal, kind of, well, I shouldn't say between zero and one. Technically it could be just a decimal sentence. So in this case here, 0 0.031, that would be equivalent to 3.1%. That is 1%, uh, sorry, sorry. One would be the same thing as 100%, and then as you carry on, right? So two would be a 200% change on and on and on. 
What we could also do in order to get this directly as a percent is you could say, okay, hey, this is our formula. We can just change it a little bit. We can go value final minus value initial divided by value initial, and then you could multiply it by 100%. In this case here, instead of getting 0 0.031, we get 3.1, and then percent sign, so the units carry forward, 3.1%. So we see these are synonymous, two different ways to represent the same thing. Uh, in most of the cases when we're doing math, when we're kind of utilizing, again, most of the time when we're utilizing this growth rate, we need to utilize it as a decimal. So something to keep in mind with that okay let's take a look here let's take a look what has happened this is the change in real gdp over that time period but let's compare that to our change in real gdp per capita because let's keep in mind when we're looking at the growth rate when we're looking at economic growth typically we're interested in that growth of real gdp per capita, that is how much output per person or how much income per person. So let's take a look and compare this growth rate of real GDP to our growth rate of GDP per capita. Okay, so over the same time period, we have had a growth rate in real GDP per capita of a little bit lower. 0.0195. Okay, so if real GDP is growing at 3% per year, well, often we end up getting interested in is, hey, okay, if we're going at 3% per year, how many years till our real GDP doubles? That is, hey, in 2017, we have a GDP of 2 trillion. Presuming this was a constant growth rate, and that's a big assumption, right? It does fluctuate, but presuming that was a constant growth rate, we could ask ourselves, how many years will it take for this 2 trillion to double to 4 trillion? That is, how many years for us to be able to have twice as much stuff that we're producing as a country, as a nation, as an economy? Well, there's two ways we can solve this. What we'll take a look at first is kind of a bit of a simple way. It's an approximation, and it works well if we have growth rates, say, under 4-ish percent. If we start to get higher growth rates or we get higher rates of change, it begins to break down. It begins to not be as, as good of an approximation. So we'll take a look at the approximation method first. And that approximation method is our rule of 72. So rule of 72, what does that say? It's saying if we do 72 divided by our percent growth rate, we will get time to double in years. Now, the trick with this, and this is where if you recall, I said, hey, mostly when we're doing math, we want to use this 0 0.031, that is we want to use this decimal form. This is that one exception. This is that one exception where we don't want to use that decimal form. What we would want to do here to figure out our time to double is we would want to do 72 divided by 3.1, right? As in 3.1%, but you can ignore that percent sign. So if we work that out, 72 divided by 3.1, that tells us, hey, if this was constant, every 23, 23.23 uh, 23 years, the amount of stuff that we're able to produce as an economy doubles. That is, we would expect in 23 years, so, hey, what is that? That would be 23 uh, plus 2017, that's in the year 2040. In the year 2040, if we had this continual rate of growth, if we continued to average about 3% per year, in the year 2040, we would expect Canada to have a real GDP of $4 trillion. Approximately, right? That's just an approximation there. Let's take a look at the difference then in real GDP per capita. That is the amount of stuff each person in the country has. And keep in mind, that's not that big of a difference in a growth rate. Hey, this guy's growing at 3%.
This guy's growing at eh, about 2%. Well, what's the difference here? If we use our rule of 72, 72 divided by 1.95, so 72 over 1.95 gives us 36.92 years to double. So, hey, it doesn't look like that big of a difference. Like, oh, okay, averaging 2% versus averaging 3%. What's a percent difference? Well, we see that results in a 13-year difference in times to double. That is, hey, time to double again. That is, hey, this will go from 2 trillion to 4 trillion, 4 trillion to 8 trillion every 23.23 years. That is, hey, what, in 46 years, we'll go from 2 trillion to 8 trillion. Oh, hey, that's only a little bit longer than what we have here just for this guy to double altogether. So we see even tiny changes in growth, if that growth is constant throughout time, it can actually have rather drastic impacts on our time to double, on our time to actually grow output. So kind of our rough way that we can approximate time to double, time for something to get bigger. What we can also utilize if we want to use a more exact method, let's just clean up here and take a look at another method. This more exact method, we can use the following formula. We can use v naught. 1 plus g to the n equals value at the end. So v0 being our initial value, v1 being our value at the end. And what we can do is we can just, you know, kind of throw in. Uh, we want to start off with a value of 1. I want to grow at a rate of 1 plus, let's go 0 0.03. Ah, sorry, I'm using green. Let's stick together for... Uh, just color coding kind of ways. So let's use this real GDP per capita. So 0 0.0195 to the n equals, and I want time to double, so from one to two. How many years will it take that to happen given this growth rate? Keep in mind what you could do as well is instead of using one and two, you could use 100 and 200. You could use two and four. You could use any number such that V1 is twice that of v naught. What we're ultimately going to do is we're going to work through and we're going to solve for n. So as we go through that, what are we going to have? 1.0195 1 all to the n equals 2. How do we simplify this? How do we get this n by itself in order to solve for it? Well, the way we can do this is we can take the use, we can utilize natural logarithms to get rid of this exponent. That is, if we take the natural log of something, it takes the n, it brings it down in front. So what we would get if we take the log of everything, that would be n times the natural log of 1.0195 equals the natural log of 2. So, okay, now the n is down in front, n times something, well... N is going to be our log of 2 all over our log of 1.0195. Hey, what does that work out to? Uh, log of 2 divided by the log of 1.0195. We get N of 35.89 years. So in this sense here, this is our exact years to double to go from 1 to 2 as our value. Given our growth rate G, N, right? So 1 will double to 2 in 35.89 years. To compare that, right, just in case, hey, we erased it, what was the original value before? Well, before we did... 72 divided by 1.95. Keep in mind, this was our approximation. 72 divided by 1.95%. That gave us our approximation to say, hey, every 36.92 years, we doubled. So uh, we see there's a bit of a difference. Again, why the difference? That guy's just approximating this one. This is our exact, our exact measure of time to double. So keep that in mind as we work through.
typically, if I'm asking you a question, hey, how many years for something to double? I will tell you, utilizing the rule of 72, how many years will it take for GDP to double? How many years will it take for your $1,000 saved at 3% to double to 2,000, right? It'll always be a question along that, utilizing the rule of 72. So that way they'll always direct you as to which one I want you to use because, hey, this one's a bit more long form. Many of you might not be comfortable using natural logarithms. That's fine. This is just kind of showing you, hey, how we could get it the exact method. Keep in mind, this is not really what we're going to be doing a lot in 104 at least in 104 at least. Okay, so we've taken a look at growth rates, we've taken a look at amount of time for something to double. What we're gonna utilize is we're gonna utilize this formula for a second to work the other way. And that is to say, hey, what is our growth rate if we know how many years we're looking over? That is, hey, let's just back up for a second here. Here we worked over, hey, 2016 to 2017, one year period, and we got a 3% growth rate. That's 3% per year. What if we were looking over a longer time span? That is, let's, uh, let's clear up and let's take a look. What if, what if we had instead, and let's just change colors and carry on underneath the same headings here. What if we had in 2015 jumping to 2019? And that is in 2015, we had a real GDP of 1.93. And in 2019, we had jumped up to 2.08. Well, if we went to go calculate our growth rate like we had here, we could do that. We could go final value minus initial value divided by initial value. So what is that? 2.08 minus 1.93. Uh, we're then dividing by 1.93 we're going to get a growth rate of 0.078%, uh, right? And it's like, oh, wow. Wow, we grew really fast over this, over this four-year period, a 7 .8, almost an 8% growth rate. But no, 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 no. Keep in mind, this is not our annual growth rate. This is our growth rate over this four-year period. Right? This is an almost 8% growth rate from 2015 to 2019. What we're interested in is the average growth rate. That is, on average, each year, what was our annual growth rate between these over this time period? Well, the reflux, the uh, reflux, the reflex that we often end up seeing with this is that we go, okay, 2019, 2015, that's a four year period. So, hey, Let's just go 0 0.078 divided by 4, and we will get 0.78 divided by 4. We'll get about, hey, look at that. About a 2% growth rate over that four-year period. This here, that is just coincidence. That is just coincidence that there's the same numbers. They are not actually linked to one another. This here is still looking at the growth of real GDP. Just over that four years, uh, we get a very similar number. That being said, this is not the way, this is not the way to do it. That's not the way to work through it. If we want to work through this and we actually want to find out, hey, what is our growth rate on average over this period of time, we need to conduct this a little bit differently. And the way we need to conduct this is we need to utilize that equation again. Uh, value at the start, 1 plus our growth rate all to the n equals value at the end. In this case here, we know our value at the start, 1.93. 1 plus our growth rate. We don't know what our growth rate is. That's what we're trying to find out. And we're looking over a four-year period, and we wind up at 2.08. So now doing our algebraic voodoo, we can work through this. We can go 2.08 divided by 1.93. So we get 1 plus g to the 4 equals 2.08 divided by 1.93. And I could work through what you get that as a number. I'm just going to leave that to the last step here. What I can do finally, I want to get this 1 plus g by itself. That is, I need to get rid of this to the power of 4. Oh, no, are we going to use logs again? No, 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 no. 
in this case, because we know what the number is, we can just raise everything to the one quarter power. That is, if we do that, we would get one plus G to the four times to the one fourth equals 2.08 all over 1.93 all to the one fourth. Hey, four times one fourth, that cancels each other out. We just get to the power of one. So the power of one is just itself. So we get, hey, one plus G equals all of this. Or, hey, let's just jump a step here and go G equals two. Oh, that was not a two. Let's try that again. 2.08 all over 1.93 all to the one fourth minus one. And if we work through this, we get our average growth rate. If we wanna put this kind of in generic forms, if you just wanna utilize a formula, hey, our average annual growth rate would be value at the end divided by value at the start, all over one over N minus one. And where does this come from? Well, that comes from just rearranging this guy to solve or n. So what do we get in that situation? We get 2.08 divided by 1.93. We'll raise that all to the one quarter power. And then we subtract one and we get an average growth rate over this four year period of just under 2%, 0 0.0188. So right, we see that this does fluctuate through time. At times it was higher. 1617, we saw a really good booming economy. Uh, earlier on, 15, not so great, right? You see that. You see that here, where, hey, from 2015 to 2016, 1.93, 21.94. Not a drastic increase in real GDP. So there's lower numbers balance out with the higher growth rates, like we saw from 1.94 to 2. Or, hey, in the next few years, it went from 2 to 2.08. We see that, hey, we witnessed greater growth leading up to 2019, but we averaged out to just under a 2% rate of growth over that four year time period. That is, hey, if we had this rate of growth over ever, how many years would it take for GDP to double? Well, again, we can do that. We can do 72 divided by 1.88, and that would give us about 38 years, 38.3 years to double. So again, way we can play around with the rule of 72 to see that. Okay, well, let's take a look at some kind of historical averages over the last 10 years so we can really get a good idea as to what we are looking at, as to what typical rates of growth have been. So rates over the last... 10 years. Okay, so looking back over the last 10 years, let's take a look at the average growth rate of real GDP. And we'll also take a look at the average growth rate of real GDP per capita. So hey, how much stuff we're making as an economy altogether versus how much stuff we're making per person. So let's take a look at first real GDP over the last 10 years, this has grown at about 1.69%. That is, if we want to think about it in another way, if we're growing at 1.69% over 10 years, well, that would be every 42.6 years we double, All right? So 42.6 years to go from $2 trillion to $4 trillion worth of stuff produced in fixed dollars, right? What about over the last 10 years? What has been our growth in GDP per capita? Well, that looked pretty good before. We had that 1.95 over that two-year stretch we were looking at. Well, over the last 10 years, GDP per capita, real GDP per capita, has only grown at about 0.56%. That is, if you work that out, how many years to double in this case? 128 years. That is, hey, within our lifetime, if this is the new normal, if this is the new growth rate that we're looking at going forward of our real GDP per capita, within our lifetime, we will not see our incomes double. 
Keep in mind, it was only a few generations ago where real GDP per capita was growing at rates where, hey, your income, your average income per person was twice as much of that as your parents. So only a few generations ago where that was the case. Over the recent years, we have witnessed a slowing of growth rates, and that has really led to a lot of discussion about productivity, a lot of discussion about the continuity of growth. Can we witness growth forever? Can we witness this doubling of output forever into the future? Or, hey, this scarcity catch up, is technology not the big savior to fix it all? So some interesting discussion points with that. To wrap up this video, what have we done? Well, we've taken a look at a brief history of growth. We've taken a look at this whole idea of the hockey stick of growth that, hey, for human history, output per person, income per person has been relatively stagnant. We hit the Industrial Revolution and boom, we witnessed a drastic increase in growth. We witnessed that income per person exploded. People's quality of life, their standard of living got better and better and better year after year. We then looked at ways that we can measure real GDP growth. So we looked at how we can get that percent change. From that percent change, we took a look at the rule of 72 to approximate our years to double. And we also took a look at our compound growth formula, this guy here, and how we can play around with that to work out a growth rate if we're dealing with a span of many years and if we wanted to get into it, how we could solve for n as well, if we wanted time to double. Although keep in mind, typically, I'll just be asking you, consider the rule of 72, how many years for a variable to double. So that's what we went through in this video, just a cursory overview of growth. In the next video, we're gonna be taking a look at some growth models, some theories as to why we have economic growth, um, what we can do to encourage economic growth, That'll be coming up in the next video. If you do have any questions though about anything we've covered in this one, feel free to comment below, feel free to post on the D2L Frequently Asked Questions, and of course, feel free to send me an email. Thanks, until next time.